welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to SWF Revolver. We welcome you to the show. We are going to be doing something a little bit different here for Revolver. Instead of showing all of the matches and then having uh, the main event with no commentary, what we are going to do is we are going to go through the highlights of these matches, the first six matches, we watch about the last minute or so, and then we will get into the main event. So the first matchup of the night, it is going to be Ryan Adams versus the newcomer, the Beast Ventura. And here we go. We see the Beast Ventura reversing a pickup by Ryan Adams into a DDT. And there's that big discus clothesline putting down Ryan Adams hard. And instead of going for the pin right away, the Beast Ventura turns him inside out, flips him head over heels, and then goes down for the pin. The ref gets down there and counts the one, two, three. Your winner versus Ryan Adams is the Beast Ventura. He's been on quite the tear lately as uh, Ventura is two and one now. He did lose a triple threat match on shootout. But with all that said, he has gotten two victories here on Revolver. Our next matchup of the evening is going to be Hunter King taking on the former champion in Alex Corzo. And we see this starting off Hunter King not getting able to get the pin on Alex Corzo. But King with a kick to the midsection, double underhook, picks him up before spinning him around, dropping him with that neck breaker, and going down for the pin. The ref loses his mind for uh, a, a hot second there. Hunter King breaks the the pin finally. Hunter King with a deadlift power bomb to the former champion. And again, we see Hunter King lining Alex Corzo up. And this time hitting this spinning neck breaker in the center of the ring going down for the pin the ref gets down to count and he gets the one two three this matchup brings hunter king up to three and four alex corzo down to five and one unfortunately uh, hunter king though a couple of victories here on revolver and a triple threat victory over ventura and the savage john robb on shootout Brings him higher up the list, and he who knows what we're going to see from Hunter King. Following that matchup, it is Mason Foster versus the veteran in Vice. And we start this highlight out with Vice. Couple of clotheslines, finishing out with a tilt-a-whirl backbreaker on the former leader, or not, I want to say former leader, the leader of the Fallen Kingdom. Reversal there, but Vice right back into it he's, he's a veteran he is wily and he can get pretty much out of anything but mason foster dropping the leg on the knee he pretty much focuses on vice's legs this entire matchup drags him to the center of the ring dropping the knee again hard right just below the knee and working over the lower half of vice before locking him up tightening the grip on the knee and it's not long before Vice tells the ref to ring that bell. Vice taps out to Mason Foster. With this victory Mason Foster goes up 3-4. and four, Vice 2-4 and four here on Revolver. Now as you win matches you remove yourself from Revolver. Mason Foster has done just that with this victory he is no longer on revolver this list fluctuates a lot between the bottom 15 and the top 15 it's fluctuating winners are brought up the next matchup it is Elliot Collins taking on a bloody Lance Romance Elliot Collins hits the RKO bust Lance Romance wide open after we see that little side slam there from Collins, he's gonna go 
way, way, way up top. And he wants Lance Romance to get up to his feet. He does just that. Elliott takes a dive off the top rope into that diving code breaker down for the pin. The ref gets down to count, but Lance not ready to give up, even though he is just covered in blood from, a, like I said, a previous RKO. Lance kicks out of that diving code breaker, picks Elliott Collins up, who quickly reverses. He was going for the last ride powerbomb, and Lance down with the power slam, excuse me, the scoop slam, which puts Elliott Collins away. The surprise win of the night, and it belongs to this bloodied and beaten man of Lance Romance. Lance Romance goes up to two and six. Elliot Collins finishes out, shoot out with one at one and five. Lance Romance, I uh, believe that's two wins in a row for Lance. Interesting. He is working his way up off of the roster. The fifth matchup of the night, and it is Daniel Harris taking on Evelyn Reeves. And we start this with Harris coming in the ring to the ring, excuse me, and Reeves hanging him up over that top rope before sending him right back outside and losing his mind. Big shot there, and he's gonna bring Daniel Harris between the ropes, hooking up that submission move across those arms. And Evelyn Reeves really working over the upper half of Dan uh, Daniel Harris. Did I say Evelyn Harris? I meant Evelyn Reeves. Of Daniel Harris before kicking him to the outside and sending him back in the ring. Gotta win this matchup in the ring. Reeves goes up top. Elliott gets the knees from the frog splash. He gets his knees up. And as Evelyn Reeves stands up to his feet, he hits him with the deep six. And the ref gets down for the one, two, three. Daniel Harris is now two and one. Evelyn Reeves, unfortunately, is one and eight. And he will be on revolver for quite some time. Daniel Harris, though, with his second victory, is uh, moves up from revolver. We will we will see how all of these things change as uh, we go through the next week heading into Thin Red Line. The sixth matchup of the night, Keith Alexander taking on Fallen King to member Malcolm Black. Keith Alexander is one half of the gunslinging, excuse me, the gunslinger tag team champions. Let's float over DDT there from Malcolm Black as he catches a jawbreaker. Keith Alexander and his tag team partner Coda Fish have not had uh, very much single success. He hits a clothesline there on Malcolm Black. He heads all the way up to the top rope. Malcolm rolling a little further out before being summoned to his feet. Keith Alexander off the top rope, but Malcolm Black catches him in a power slam before hooking him up in that Rings of Saturn submission hold. The ref gets down nice and close where he can hear Keith Alexander tap out and he rings that bell. Malcolm Black with this victory goes up to three and three. Keith Alexander unfortunately is 0-2 in singles action, but as I said, he is one half of the Gunslinger Tag Team Champions, so singles matches probably aren't a priority for the berth right now. Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad in that big rivalry with the Sons of Carnage. Speaking of the Sons of Carnage, they are in the main event against Leo and the Sleaze. And let's get to that matchup right now. Well, in our main event here at Revolver, as you saw there on the Titan Tron, it is Leo and the Sleaze. Leo and the Sleaze, former tag team champions. They have um, had two matches since winning those championships. They faced off against uh, the 
the birth at I'm gonna get my notes here they faced off against the birth at Southern Stampede and they lost that matchup we saw Keith Alexander there earlier um, and now the birth are your gunslinger tag team champions their previous match uh, let me see if I can hunt it down here their previous match they also lost against the birth a couple of weeks ago on episode 10 but tonight they're not facing the birth they are the birth the birth they're not facing the birth they are facing the team of the sons of carnage james gaines the third jesse newman now james gaines jesse newman were on the previous episode of shootout where they did lose to the fallen kingdom who knows what's gonna happen with that james gaines is on revolver um, jesse newman not on revolver but uh, Seb Abbott is here on Revolver. James Gaines the third here on Revolver as well. As well, excuse me, Leo McKay and uh, Jesse Newman not on it, but they're brought in here for this tag team matchup. And I'm interested to see how this one's going to close out. We've had some great matches here tonight. Some highlights of those matches. If you like that format better. Uh, with me talking over kind of the highlighted parts, the last 30 seconds or so of those matches, uh, let me know down in the comments. We'll keep doing it that way. Um, and that way we're not having another hour or so long show, um, but we're still getting the content. We're still, I was going to do it to where it was screenshots of the winner, the simulation winners, um, but and then just commentate the main event but Malcolm Black as wise as he is um, mentioned that uh, we should still be somewhat more involved because because we want everybody to be on the show and that way we can uh, this is kind of OOC here but and that way everybody can be seen so that is what we're going to do. We're going to include everybody. Oh, nice shot there by Seb Abbott. We're going to include everybody by shortening up what is seen from the first six matches and then doing full-on main event here. So back to the action. Leo here. Oh, not in the corner, just on the ropes. And he's going to bounce James Gaines off into a power bomb. Nice move there by Leo. Leo and the Sleeves looking to get back in the action. Uh, but Sons of Carnage, they also want to be part of that as a tag team, in the tag team hunt, I should say. The uh, Sons of Carnage are mm, one and five. The Fallen Kingdom, five and one. I'll, I'll let you see uh, who, who's facing who lately. Uh, Thriller in the Clutch is no longer a team, as um, James Frost mentioned in Shootout has left SWF and brought in Ventura, the Beast Ventura, to take his place. But the Barth are 2-0, Ebony and Ivory are 0-1, and, and Leo and the Sleeves are 0-2. So based on wins alone, it looks like the Fallen Kingdom is next in line for those tag team championships. With Bruiser Brad on that team as we've seen many times who knows what's going to happen there so um, it looks like after um, the after the pay-per-view it's going to be uh, the Fallen Kingdom taking on the tag team champions so uh oh we have seen this before Leo willing Jesse Newman up rolling through neck breaker Nice move there, and he doesn't go for the pin. He's going more for the punishment. Kick to the midsection, and he's about to throw them bones. Rolling the dice, face first goes Jesse Newman into the pin. The ref gets down to count. Nobody's coming in. 
And a kick out at two. Oh, shot to the top of the head. Um, off of m the top of my head, I want to say, nice neck breaker there. I want to say Ebony and Ivory will be uh, getting a shot at the Tag Team Championships at the pay-per-view as uh, the Fallen Kingdom are embroiled in this rivalry with Sons of Carnage. So, uh-oh. He's crawling. Newman is, Jesse Newman's crawling, trying to get over to his tag team partner and not in time as Seb Abbott shuts it down as he drops the leg. So Ebony and Ivory getting that shot at the berth. Um, it might have been Thriller in the Clutch. They were 2-0. and oh. But as uh, as I said, James Frost is no longer with SWF. Now, Fallen Kingdom are the clear choice for those titles, for the titles, excuse me. Um, but as I said, they're kind of tangled up in this rivalry with the Sons of Carnage. But they, w they are next in line for the Tag Team Championships, regardless who wins, whether it be the Birth or uh, Ebony and Ivory, which is Jackson Montgomery and Omari Williams. And we know Kid Hades will be taking on Jay Wolf at Thin Red Line for the Maverick Championship. And Duke is going to get his shot at SDC to try to regain the Lone Star Championship. And we know Brett Storm is next in line for that championship. Back to the action now. We continue on with this tag team match. Seb Abbott bringing Jesse up to his feet. Oh! How the ref doesn't call that disqualification, I don't know. Jawbreaker. And a big slap by Jesse Newman as he comes across and a drop kick right to the side of the head of Seb. Leo cheering on his teammate over there. Uh-oh. Newman stomping on the hand of Australian sleaze Seb Abbott. Uh -oh, works him out in a shoulder block. Puts Newman down. Wanting his tag team partner in, in James Gaines, but not getting it into the back of the head. Oh, it looked like Seb was going after Gaines, but instead, clothesline from down under. He goes for the pin. Jesse, uh, excuse me, James right there to break up that pin, but look at Seb with a zigzag. And that does not bode well. Kind of the same thing happened on shootout earlier this week where Jesse Newman or, or James Gaines, I can't remember off the top of my head, was left alone. Nobody there for the tag. Newman is doesn't matter to him. Just drop kick right to the side of the head. And he's going up top. And that can only mean one thing. The diving foot stomp, and he lands square on the chest of Seb Abbott. Goes for the pin. Leo McKay not coming in in a two count. My goodness, a two count off the diving foot stomp. Bringing Seb back up to his feet now. Shot after shot is going to send him oh, into the corner. But no, he ducks out of the way and a kick to the side of the head. Back in the ring. And he's going to bring in Leo McKay. It looks like no. Jesse gets out of it. Ducks the clothesline. And another clothesline duck into a, what looked like an electric chair drop type move. DDT to Seb Abbott. That could put him away. And he's going to go up again. That DDT took out the Fallen Kingdom. Diving foot stomp dodges out of the way. Seb catches him immediately through the roll up and hits him with a vertical suplex. Nice job there. Oh, he dives out of the ring though. Seb takes this opportunity to taunt and gets caught with a springboard drop kick. Leo wanted in but not able to get the tag and here comes James Gaines. Got Seb up to his feet. Into the corner now. Elbow though to the face. Nice running neck breaker. And he's going to do a taunt again. Get the crowd fired up. Oh, nice reversal there from Gaines. Into the corner he goes. 
And he's gonna, oh no, Seb's gonna push him away. And he's gonna send him into the corner with Leo and a huge clothesline. Taking him out. It looked like maybe Seb wanted the tag, but Leo wasn't quite back up on the ring apron. That low blow, this time delivered to Gaines. And a neck snap right there. Dodging though. Uh oh. Oh, a big right hand. James gonna try to get out of this matchup. Or not. Or not. He's gonna send him through the ropes. All the way on the other side, diving through the ropes and a DDT to Seb Abbott. He is in the wrong part of town as the Sons of Carnage start raining down the kicks. Oh man, in, into that nut buster. Atomic drop, I, I always forget the name of that. Oh, but into the fireman's carry. Oh my goodness. That's, that's an attitude adjustment and he's rolling through as the ref is at six. Another one, another one to Gaines at seven now. Seb knows he can't win on the outside. The ref stops the count. And Seb now just kind of circling his prey. Finally getting up there, hitting him up in the Cobra Clutch. Nobody's coming in. Is Gaines going to tap here to the sleaze? The ref is right there in his face. No. Gaines gets out of that submission move. Big jawbreaker right there. And here comes Leo McKay. Seb's gonna roll out. Big clothesline to a taunting James Gaines. Drop kick right after that. He's gonna pull Gaines up, not wait till he gets up to his feet. Military press, gut buster. Down for the pin. One, two, three, and that is it. Leo and the Sleaze have defeated the Sons of Carnage. I don't know what that means for them as they head into uh, Thin Red Line. We'll have to see. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here on Revolver. We will catch you next time on SWF Shootout.